Tonight's lead, Republicans call for nullification. Responding to President Obama's gun safety ideas, conservatives are in a frenzy and they're reaching back to an old argument with an ugly history in this country, states' rights. Our founding fathers were very concerned about having a separation of powers. They didn't want to let the president become a king. And I'm afraid that President Obama may have this king complex sort of developing, and we're going to make sure that it doesn't happen. We will nullify anything the president does that smacks of legislation. Nullify anything the president does? Nullification? States' rights? State sovereignty? For many decades, these ideas was used to defend slavery and later Jim Crow. In 1963, Governor George Wallace stood in the schoolhouse doorway at the University of Alabama, invoking states' rights to try to block integration. I stand here today as governor of this sovereign state and refuse to willingly submit to the illegal usurpation of power by the central government, hereby denounce and forbid this illegal and unwarranted action by the central government. That was Alabama Governor George Wallace 50 years ago. Here's Mississippi Governor Phil Bryan yesterday. We will not enforce any unconstitutional measure, edict, that's being issued by the President of the United States. We need to send a clear message to the federal government that we're not going to continue to enforce what we believe to be unconstitutional laws. Different issue? Same words, states' rights. Back in the 1950s and 60s, local police often stood by and refused to enforce new civil rights laws. Now, some conservative sheriffs say they'll refuse to enforce new gun control laws from Washington because they may consider them unconstitutional. Today's conservatives aren't opposing the right of our children to go to school. But they are standing in the way of our children to go to school safely. That's why President Obama is proposing these strong, common-sense solutions to gun violence. That most fundamental set of rights to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, fundamental rights that, that were denied to college students at Virginia Tech and high school students at Columbine and elementary school students in Newtown, and kids on street corners in Chicago, those rights are at stake. We're responsible. We're all responsible for protecting our children, and that's why change is going to happen. All that talk about states' rights couldn't stop progress 50 years ago, and he must make sure it doesn't stop progress today. Joining me now is Toure, co-host of The Cycle here on MSNBC. And David Corn, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones and an MSNBC analyst. Thank you both for joining me. Sure thing. Thank you. Torre, we've heard this states' rights song and dance before, haven't we? We sure have. And I noticed that you pointed out Rand Paul talking about nullification, right? The GOP talking about nullification. He was also talking about Obama's not a king. Well, if he's not a king, then you could nullify him. If he's, he is a king, trying to be a king, then you can't nullify what a king is trying to do. But the previous GOP meme was, we need leadership from Obama. Right. Now the meme is, <laughs> he's trying to be a king. Well, you can't have it both ways. One day saying, he's not leading us, and the next day, he's trying to be a king. Look, what he put forward is very reasonable. He's not trying to take away everyone's guns. He's not trampling the Second Amendment. Right? He's doing something very responsible that allows law-abiding, responsible, responsible gun owners to have their guns and protect themselves in their homes, but also trying to create more safety for America. And he's done something that doesn't, um, that isn't worried about the political wins. He's doing what he thinks is right, what is the best policy. And I'm actually proud to see him stand up for what he thinks is the best policy and not say, well, we're not going to do an assault weapons ban because it can't get through yeah. the House. Push them as far as you can, because, you know, the pro-gun right is lost to the Democrats. So don't worry about them. We can still win elections without them. Well, David, five states where GOP lawmakers have introduced bills making it illegal to enforce President Obama's new executive action and gun proposals. Another example of states' rights and nullifications. The states of Tennessee, Texas, Wyoming, South Carolina, and North Dakota. So here we are with a states' 
rights movement live and well in 2013. This is unreal. Well, I don't think these guys truly understand the Constitution, because under the Constitution, which they claim to, to cherish, you know, it's not Yahoo sheriffs who get to decide whether <laughs> something's constitutional or not. It's something called the Supreme Court. So right away, they're undermining our entire system right. by, by issuing their, their, their edicts or their fiats against these actions. But I'm still waiting. I'm waiting for any of these guys to come out and say, OK, 23 executive actions, which ones don't you like? The ones that make it easier for uh, universal background checks to be to happen as they should be happening, just on the basis of regulations and guidances? What law, which executive action, which one are you opposed to? Which one is turning Barack Obama into a king? These guys cannot mm -hmm. deal with the specifics or the merits. But, but this They're fear-mongering for their own political purposes. Mm -hmm. But this has been consistent. Because since President Obama's been president, health care, they said we're not going to take it in our state, states' rights. Immigration, states' rights. Women, states' rights. They've gone all the way through since he's been president with threatening the states' rights stuff, and they've done it again. Maybe the reason uh, uh, that, as David points out, they're not the Supreme Court, maybe when the Supreme Court under John Roberts, certainly no liberal, said that health care was constitutional, mm -hmm. they decided we better not talk about the Supreme Court. <laughs> we better go another way to a race. I mean, I also noticed that the NRA and their people keep using Obama as this selling tool. They keep putting him on their magazines and acting like he wants to take away your guns, so you have to buy as many guns as possible before he actually takes away your guns. He's only, to this point, been a friend to the NRA and expanded where we can carry guns. So he certainly hasn't been somebody who's been trying to take away all the guns, but he's been the best-selling tool that they've ever had. Well, and if, if you look at the NRA, they yeah. sent out a fundraising letter right yeah. after this started, uh, saying, and I'm quoting from the letter, that uh, uh, t uh, t NRA fundraising letter today about President Obama's supposed real goal on gun control. The letter says the main goal of the gun banners in Congress is not to make schools safer, but to ban your guns. That's and and, and David, they come with yeah. this. Well, we need to have our guns in case the government comes in mm. to take. First yeah. of all, if the government came in to take our guns, do you think they're going to knock on the door and, 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 and try to take <laughs> it with an automatic weapon for, to an automatic weapon? I mean, it would certainly be a lot more ammunition and that, a, that an automatic weapon couldn't fight the government. You know, you, so you, it's absurd on his face. Yeah. You really haven't seen too many gun grabbers in the course of history say, I support your rights to have a gun, I want to limit your access to certain guns, and then confiscate all the guns. Right. I mean, it's, it, this is crass exploitation of paranoia and conspiracy thinking that is being fueled by the NRA. And I talked about this last night on Ed show. I am still waiting for any stand-up Republican. Michael Steele kind of right. did that last night. But for someone in an elected leadership position to come out and say, this is crazy. And listen, Colin Powell, great man in some ways, he doesn't count. Okay, I'm waiting for somebody yeah. in an elected leadership position in the Republican Party right. to come out and say, enough of this stuff. Let's have a real debate about the policy. But that idea you talk about all these people who want to have guns just in case for that day when they have to fight against the government. Remember Waco, Texas? They had that idea. Yeah, but, but How did that point, work out for them? But the point is, Toure, not only it didn't work out well in Waco, we are talking about they're going to be shooting yes. American soldiers yes. and policemen. Yes. Can you imagine yeah. if people on the left yes. were saying we are arming ourselves yes. in case of the police I mean, and the army? Can happen? Happen? How is it, I mean, it's, a, how it's is amazing. It that this is a good, credible argument yeah. for them. We have to make sure that we are armed so we're going right. to overthrow the government. But well, well maybe, that makes me say maybe we should do something <laughs> about your guns. Right. Yeah, well, let, let me ask you this, David. When you look, sure. at, look at this. David Barton was on Glenn Beck's uh, telling a story of, that supposedly happened in the 1850s about armed school kids. Watch this. He comes in the school with his gun to shoot the teacher. He decides not to shoot the teacher because all the kids pull their guns out and point it at him and said, you kill the teacher, you die. He says, okay, <laughs> teacher lives. Real simple stuff. Save the life. of the. There was no shooting because all the kids, and we're talking in elementary school, all the kids pull their guns out and says, we like our teacher. All the kids pull their guns out in school. I mean, this is how f 
fringe they have become. I mean, it's crazy. They're in a frenzy. Yeah. To sit up on television and talk like this is absolutely unthinkable. I'd like to see any evidence of that event happening yeah. other than in some B Western movie that, that you know like like Ronald Reagan used to confuse movies with reality. You know, whatever <laughs> happened, you know, to the right wing conservative notion of law and order. Mm. Here you have these sheriffs and these state legislatures around the country, when I mean certain, you know, red states, saying we will arrest yeah. federal law enforcement officers if they enforce the law, the people who sometimes put their lives on the line to protect us, and we're talking about them in such disregard. This is what happened back in the 90s when the same crowd was talking about jackbooted thugs, yeah. and it led in some ways to Oklahoma City. This is, we could be heading towards frightening times with this sort of rhetoric. Well, we, let, me, let me say this. Uh, this is the anniversary year of the March on Washington, Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. who his holiday will be on Monday when the president is inaugurated. In the famous speech he made, I Have a Dream, he referred to a governor whose lips drips with the words of interposition and nullification. That is the words that we're hearing mm -hmm. dripping from lips today, interposition and nullification. Maybe when they said the president was trying to be a king, maybe they were talking about Martin Luther King. <laughs> Toure, David Korn, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. And be Good sure night. to catch Toure on The Cycle weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming up is day two of the big GOP unity retreat, a time for change. New blood. But why in the world are Republicans asking Paul Ryan for advice on beating President Obama? And as the president surges in his second term, we have news tonight about the birth of movement, and it might surprise you. Plus, 50 years since civil rights leader Medgar Evers was murdered, his legacy is living on through his wife. An icon of the civil rights movement, Merle Evers has a big honor at the inauguration. She joins me live tonight. You're watching Politics Nation, the place for politics. MSNBC.